here at Firebase, we're always making improvements and fixing problems in everything that we make. And sometimes those are a big deal, but sometimes you might blink and miss them. Well, not anymore, because every month or so, I'll dig up my favorites, both big and small, and present them to you here on an episode of Firebase Release Notes. Now we have a lot to cover again today, starting off with one of the releases from this year's Firebase Summit that I missed in our previous episodes. A key factor in scaling a successful app is knowing how your users are interacting with it. Our robust integration with Google Analytics helps you understand what actions your users are taking inside your app, where they are spending their time, and why they churn, so that you can make smarter decisions. We recently added three new analytics APIs that help you collect, record, and manage analytics data in a way that suits your growing business. The first API is the Google Analytics 4 measurement protocol, which lets you log events directly to Google Analytics. This is especially useful when you want to augment your client-side data with server-to-server -server calls to gain new insights. For those of you who want to create your own custom dashboards, the new Data API gives you programmatic access to your Google Analytics reporting data. And finally, the Admin API allows you to configure your Analytics account and set user permissions programmatically. See the link to the documentation in the description below. Last month, we launched a European region for the real-time database, in addition to our existing region in the United States. You typically choose this new region if you need to store your customer data in Europe, or if you'd like to reduce latency for customers in this part of the world. We just added region selection to the Firebase console, which means that you can now even create a database in Europe when you're on the free Spark plan. So get started today. I'll leave a comment below to tell us what your reason is for choosing where to create your database and what your experience is with the latency. We'll continue to add features to our local emulator suite to allow you a first-class local development experience. The Firestore UI in our emulator suite now allows you to filter on not equal queries and handle sorting better. And the hosting UI in the emulator suite now supports internationalization rewrites. We also fixed a bunch of problems in the emulator UI, so be sure to upgrade. You can find the link to the Firebase command line tools in the description below. Crashlytics NDK version 17.3 has a major upgrade in our native crash reporting internals. Specifically, we're now using Crashpad for reporting issues. This update should require no work on your part, but it addresses emerging issues with capturing certain types of native SIG abort crashes on Android versions 10 and later. Thanks to all developers who are reporting the issue on GitHub and who now have given us feedback on the fix. Importing and exporting data is a critical feature for Firestore, but until recently, it was only available from the command line interface. Now, this functionality is also available in the Firestore panel in the Google Cloud console. This launch not only puts import-export at your fingertips, but it also shows you the status of your existing import and export operations. Apple now requires that developers who publish apps on the App Store disclose certain information regarding that app's data usage. We have added a documentation page to help you prepare for these data disclosure requirements, which are commonly referred to as nutrition labels. This documentation describes the Firebase iOS library behaviors that could require disclosure according to Apple's guidelines. Check out the link in the description below for full details. And that brings us to the end of our final episode of Firebase release notes for this year. A year that we can safely say has turned out quite different for most of us than what we thought a year ago. But through all that's happened, we've seen you continue to use Firebase in so many ways. And it's an inspiration for everyone here to continue making Firebase even better. Thanks for being such great partners for us and for adding to this wonderful little community of ours. We can't wait to see what you'll create in the next year. My name is Frank, or Puff, and I'll see you on a future episode of Firebase Release Notes.